Good evening. I'd like to call to order the 528th meeting of the City of Laurel Planning Commission. If you wish to be heard at this meeting, please sign the speaker list provided on the table at the side of the council chamber. And the chairman reserves the right to limit the amount of time each speaker has for each agenda. And agendas were also included over there. Uh, before we start with the agenda, I would like to have a very quick presentation. At the last meeting, we elected a new chairperson, myself, and a vice chair, Mr. John Kish. Uh, on behalf of all of the commissioners, the staff, the council, uh, February of 2010 until February of 2015, we were, the Planning Commission was under the wonderful leadership of Mr. Don Welliford, and we would like to recognize your leadership and thank you with a presentation of a gavel and, <laughs> and that. So on behalf of... You don't want to hit me with it? All of us. Thank you. And Rick, can, can, can I ask you? <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's right. Rick Wilson is not with us tonight, but he sends his regard, thank and this you. is from all of us. And thank we thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. With the staff we have and the membership on the committee, it was a picnic. This is all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Green. If you would call the roll, Councilman Smalls here. Mr. Walford here. Mr. Williford here. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Kish, Mrs. Holland, here, and I'm going to have to excuse myself. Okay. Thank you. And Chairwoman Batman, here. You have a quorum, ma'am, Chairwoman. Thank you. Agenda item number two, approval of the minutes from the March 10th, 2015 meeting. Have you reviewed the minutes and are there any questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain Madam a Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make a move to approve the minutes of the March 10th meeting. Madam Chair, I'll second that. Ms. Green, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Walford? Yes. Mr. Williford? Yes. Mr. Kish? Yes. Chairwoman Batman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three, sign package amendment town center at Laurel, 8401 Cherry Lane, Filed by Greenberg Gibbons Commercial. Staff report, please. Yes. When the town center revitalization overlay was approved, there was a tenant manual uh, that contained signage criteria for the tenants. Uh, the applicant has come in and requested four additional signs that were not contained in the tenant manual. Uh, the first would, uh, is re they're requesting a sign on the uh, fourth street location on the top deck uh, that would have advertisement for uh, the theater and for Burlington. Uh, the second sign would be an entrance sign <coughs> that would be on the back uh, on fourth street also, but it would be on the wall that contains the electrical substation. Uh, the third sign would be an illuminated sign that would say P for parking that would be on the north side of the parking deck on the second level. And sign D would be an identification or a directional sign that would be actually on the parking garage behind Burlington that would point to the upper deck. Uh, ramp so that you would know that if the first deck is full you can go up to the second deck. Uh, it's recommended after going through the regulations that uh, sign type A be denied and sign type B, C, and D be approved. Uh, and with the condition that there be uh, electric permits purchased by the applicant. That concludes the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Any questions for staff report? Madam Chair, if I could just ask, Mr. Brock, uh, with your recommendation to deny sign type A, uh, are you proposing any alternative? No, 
because there's a sign on the back of the theater, a okay. regal sign right. already. There's a sign on the back uh, of Burlington. There's signs on Cherry on the monument sign, and there's sign on US-1 on the monument sign. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I open the public hearing, would the applicant like to speak? Thank you. Madam Chairperson, members of the committee, um, uh, let me say congratulations on your election. Thank you. As always, great job, sir. Um, what, what's driving the sign issue, just so you, so you particularly know, the, uh, as we expected, the theaters are a grand slam. Um, Regals, this particular Regal has been number one in their chain uh, for a month or so. Um, um, and so it's, it's doing extremely well. We, we have a couple issues in pulling our customers out at the center. The first one is everybody thinks the parking deck is the old deck. We just made it look pretty. And so they won't park on the top of it, which is an issue, which is driving people to park in the parking fields, particularly in front of Old Navy and, and uh, some of the other store areas. And then when we explain to them it's, it's fine, then we gains more attention by people doing that. The second thing is, uh, is that um, you, you kind of always have to encourage people to go where you need them to go. And without the deck having any signage whatsoever, it kind of, uh, it, uh, you know, kind of causes new people coming to Laurel to not quite understand where they can park. And Burlington in specific did something very rare. They put a back and a front door on the store uh, in particular. And, and you don't find that in most shopping centers, nor do you usually find it on major tenants. But because the parking deck's out back in, in, in that area, they'd like to take the advantage of, of both sides. So that's why we offered the, uh, we offered the sign uh, package that uh, we're doing, and we think it's very tastefully done. It's very low-key. Even though they're lit, they're very low-key. They will not uh, cause any, uh, any overflow into the residential neighborhood. And we'd ask for your favorable consideration. I have a question. In terms of the, the staff report, and that was for the, the type sign A, which was along with the Regal and, and the Burlington, um, would you consider another at that on the 4th Street side that would say park your town center parking here or something like that with the town center logo versus the two? Well, we, we may go back and look at that based on the okay. staff's recommendation. The problem is we get a lot of people who are looking at the rear of the old shopping center and get to that exit and drive past it because okay. they think it's part of the rear of the other shopping center. So that's why we're kind of doing a sign that said, you're here if you come into this entrance. Again, only to increase the probability that people will come in and park in the deck because that's where the one ramp is. Right. The other ramp is further down. So that, that it, we'll come back and take a look at it and see if we can do something a little bit better design. Okay, because I, I only park on the top deck, but I absolutely know exactly what you're talking about because there's very few people on that top deck, which surprises me. So I, I, I understand where you're going to try and get some in, but I also kind of saw what the staff report was saying with that kind of tall, you know, Burlington Regal sign there. So that's why I was, was asking we'll, we'll that. We'll take a look and, and, and meet with the planning staff and see if there's something we can do to facilitate that area. Thank you. If I could, before you go, Madam Chair, if I could, in that area uh, where it's noted on, on our um, drawing, right in here as you turn in, because I noticed that this weekend, there's sort of an undeveloped patch right there. And, and I'm wondering if that could contribute to misleading folks to thinking that that particular area is not developed. It's just before the, the ramp to go up mm -hmm. the deck. I know exactly it's, what you're talking about. Okay. And is, are there any plans to do anything with that that could possibly make it appear that it's more finished? We can, we can take a look at it. The reason why it sits kind of empty is because of that BG&E substation, uh -huh. there are setback requirements that I think we were required to adhere to. 
And as you know, we're all kind of sharing. There's, there's our property, PG&E's property, and Federal's property are all sharing cross easements. So anything everybody does in that particular area, everybody's got to agree to it. Now, I have to admit um, that I'm probably as guilty as many other folks who drive in that area. I don't even think about the upper deck. And I will drive around and around, and the covered part, portion of it, <clears throat> moaning and groaning and complaining about not being able to find a parking space where there's there's nothing to indicate in that area that there is parking available uh, above deck. So well, we'll go back and look at that entrance point and see if there's something we can do to help yeah. that. And I'll, I'll check with BG and E about okay. the parking space and okay. see if we can do something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I have no one signed up for this agenda item. However, we at this point will open the public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this item? Okay, seeing no one, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the signed package amendment for Town Center at Laurel, 84-1 Cherry Lane, um, with the denial of sign type A and the approval of sign type B, C, and D, and that to include the action on resolution number 15-14-PC. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Ms. Green, if you'll call the roll. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Williford? Yes. Mr. Kish? Yes. Chairwoman Batman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item, I'm trying to reconcile, make sure I'm on the same ones on each. Agenda item seven, plat of consolidation, 7306 and 7400 Conti Road, filed by Islamic Community Center of Laurel. Robert? Yes, this item is requested by the applicant to be tabled until the next public hearing, just so that his surveyor can speak with uh, Prince George County to discuss the right of way dedication issue. Thank you. Does that require a motion up here? Yes. Okay. Based on the staff report, do we have a motion to table this agenda item? I make, Madam Chairman, I make that motion that we table this item. Second. Ms. Green, roll. Mr. Kish? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Williford? Yes. Chairwoman Batman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Map amendment, agenda item 11, map amendment number 847, Sandy Spring Village. 312 Sandy Spring Road, filed by Legend Builders Incorporated for recommendation to the mayor and city council. Yes, this property is one and a half acres that's currently zoned R18 medium density. There's an existing single family house on the property. Legend Builders requests rezoning that. Uh, they filed their application to rezone the house R55, one family detached zone, and the rest of the property to be zoned R20. In order to, the purpose of the rezoning is to construct five new duplexes with each half of the duplex on its own separate lot for single family ownership. Agency responses, notable responses was Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission said that the rezoning would have a negligible impact on the water and there may be an impact on downstream sewer system without, but they did not specify the exact nature. Letters were mailed to adjacent property owners. The department received one response from a neighbor who desired that it remain undeveloped. The sign was posted on the property and it's, and the newspaper ads will be published twice later this month. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend to the Mayor and City Council approval for the rezoning for the entire lot to R20. One family semi-detached, two family detached, and one family triple attached. One, there has been substantial change in the character of the neighborhood where the property is located. The property adjacent to the eastern boundary contains multifamily apartments 
that are in the process of being demolished and reconstructed. Properties to the north and west are either single-family detached or two-family semi-attached, and to the south are townhouses. The rezoning of the subject property from R18 to R20 will permit the development of two-family semi-attached owner-occupied residential units. The existing single-family detached residential unit is a permitted use in the R20 zoning district. To rezone the existing residential unit to R55 single-family detached would create a spot zone which is prohibited as spot zoning makes unjustified exceptions for a parcel or parcels within a district. Legends builders were informed of the staff recommendation and because the, sing the existing single family house is a permitted use in the R20 zone, they, ha they have, they're, they're fine with the rezoning recommendation. Uh, Mr. Collins is here as well as the surveyor if there's any further questions. Yes. Before um, Ms. Holland left, she had one question regarding parking and off-street parking, which she asked the applicant, and her question was answered um, regarding the off-street parking. Did you have anything that you wanted to speak to? Again, Madam Chairman, members of the committee, Bob DePietro, 502 Gorman Avenue, representing Legend Partners. Um, this uh, uh, is better known for the old Laurel Lights as the Brow property uh, on the east side of Sandy Spring Road. Um, and uh, it, currently, it is zoned for medium density apartments. And uh, it, uh, the Growls uh, had the property for decades, literally decades. Legends has bought it, and they're proposing uh, on the site to take the existing house, as the planning department's pointed out. It needs to be there. It would be spot zoning to change it any other way. It's staying. It's our intent to redo um, the uh, house. Uh, we're going to redo the driveways, the parking pad on the front, and then the existing driveway will serve as the entranceway into the project, and we will have approximately five duplexes very similar in nature to the ones legend built at the corner of Montgomery and Sandy Spring. And in addition, uh, the change there was that these units will all have a single car garage and the parking pads out front will ho hold two other cars. Uh, so there's at basically three spaces uh, per area, plus an additional 11 spaces um, in the triangle that you see, which has also been designed to accommodate um, a trash truck moving through that uh, development. Um, uh, and so it, it, it will, um, suffice to say, take care of any of the public works department needs. Um, I would uh, point out to the fact uh, that um, uh, thanks to Laurel Gardens too, and this particular project, and in particular Legends Builders, the WSSC is probably gonna have us build the entire water and sewer lines on uh, most of the neighborhood up there. Um, and for those of you who don't um, know, as part of all this development, Laurel Gardens 2 will be required to drive a new sewer line from there down to US Route 1 at the corner of Gorman as part of the project requirement with WSSC. Um, and we've had a preliminary comment from, uh, as we're going through the county stormwater management um, issue that they have no objection to the zoning and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the applicant? Um, well, I had a couple of questions, but I thought we, I was going to wait till later. I mean, I thought this was just on the zoning, but since this you're talking only, about some other things. That's fine. That driveway there, uh, when you pull in there, is that some common area there? I see it's shared with 310. It's going to have to require an easement with 310 for us to widen it to a 22 foot which we're also willing to improve his driveway back to that house as well. That's all. Okay. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? I have one. I have Feel turn your solid. mic on. Thank you. Okay. I've already uh, spoken to somebody about this. 
the alley that goes behind that's in there that goes all the way down to 9th Street, that's not going to be used. I think on the plan, that's not going to be used for anything. We're actually using it um, as a buffer. As a buffer line of trees. That alley, as you well know, over the years has been obstructed by very, various buildings and residential units all the way uh, to the other side uh, to 9th Street. Um, anywhere from single family homes on Montgomery Street that have fenced it or um, some of it's just been blocked over the years, but it, that alleyway still sits there. Yeah. It's going to stay as it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's not going to, okay. That's all I have. Thank you. I'd like to open the public here. I have someone, actually, I'm sorry, I have someone signed up to speak. A Bud Pruitt, is it? 502 Gorman Avenue. Oh, sorry. I thought it said Bud. Okay. So I have no one else speak. To... That's his alias. <laughs> when he's not Laurel. <laughs> when he's not Laurel. Is there anyone else That's wishing to speak like. on this item? Bud Pruitt. Thank you. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion that uh, the City of Laurel Planning Commission recommend to the Mayor and City Council of Laurel that Map Amendment Number 847 be approved to rezone the entire lot to 520, to R20, one family, somebody detached, and two family, and one family, triple attached housing. Do I have a no, second? second. Thank you. Ms. Green? Mr. Kish? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Williford? Yes. Chairwoman yes. Batman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Agenda item 12, recall of parking waiver for 385 Main Street for Redemption Community Church, requested by Planning Commission Chairwoman Mitzi R. Batman. Um, like to say that following the meeting, um, and we had the applicant speak to us and then also had staff, some additional points came up that immediately following the planning commission meeting, and we also had some members that voted against it. I checked with the staff and then also had the lawyers review because the information I think when I voted for this in the affirmative, I believed that we were getting a coffee shop on Main Street that for two hours on Sunday was almost going to be sublet in a sense for a church. And then I think, and then I know that the staff did not incorporate the parking spaces for the apartments because they believed the apartments were staying as is. And so there was just a lot of additional information brought up and even though I believed we clarified that we were only approving that parking amendment and if anything else came up, that that would be dealt with down the line, what I realized is the multi-uses needed to be reviewed by city staff to present to us as a planning commission. So I did request the recall. I am, it was in the affirmative of voting for this and therefore have asked to have this placed on the agenda. Um, I received additional materials at my home um, that provided a lot of additional information to me and good information on, on, on the intent and purpose of this. So with that as explanation, I would like to ask staff for the staff report. Actually, <clears throat> oh, I. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, uh, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is John Shea. I'm one of the city solicitors Thank you. Uh, for the city of Laurel. And I was asked to do a legal review after the March 10th hearing. And uh, just for clarification purposes, um, as you know, uh, the original application was a very short application for a parking waiver. Just mentioned a thousand square foot coffee shop and a 500 foot worship shop, uh, worship space, 500 square foot worship space in the back for about 10 families, I think, of a, of a small church. Um, 
and the, the city was prepared to go along with that parking uh, modification request at that time based on the information that it had. Uh, at the hearing, uh, evidently, there were some, there was a bit of an expansion in the testimony over what was actually in the short little application. And um, it turned out that the uh, apartment upstairs was going to be converted into a commercial conference room and office space. Um, the thousand square foot coffee shop, the proceeds from the coffee shop were going to be used for Ilya Masonary purposes or, or charitable purposes, which the staff wasn't aware of in the application. And also the uh, the thousand foot coffee, the thousand square foot coffee uh, shop space also on Sundays uh, was was going to be used somewhat for worship space as well, because the intent was to perhaps encourage homeless people to come in and participate in the worship services. Uh, so those were some of the changes in the testimony as, a, as opposed to the application. And so the staff obviously had done a technical staff report based on the application itself and had also done a proposed resolution based upon the application. And it was that proposed resolution that was ultimately signed, even though it doesn't match what the testimony uh, was at that time. Uh, the other thing that happened was the, the um, council shortly before, the mayor and council shortly before the hearing, uh, had passed a zoning uh, text amendment uh, which uh, could affect the legality of having a nonprofit type coffee shop in that zone because I believe that type of use is no longer allowed in the in the village commercial zone which this is in. So, so for those reasons, I suggested to the staff that they ask the planning commission um, for a reconsideration, just so that you know. Obviously, the the impact of the expanded testimony is exactly what the chairman said that the parking calculations could change and so and that's that's exactly the reason why the uh, the city sent a letter in or the staff sent a letter into the planning commission on march 17th asking for the recall and then the uh, madam chairperson put that on the agenda tonight so that's just the background the city would be asking for a reconsideration of the decision uh, of the um, march uh, march 10th year thank you Thank you. And based on that and the legal review, I believe staff did a new calculation and a new report. Um, are you presenting that? Recall. Or do we, I'm sorry. Do I believe the proper, um, if I might. Okay, the, the thank you. The proper process would be for the uh, Planning Commission to vote to reconsider the prior action. That puts you back to square one. Okay. And then you could consider a new staff report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, just a procedural question. I was in the affirmative. May I make the motion as chairperson for that yeah, reconsideration? Yeah, I, I, I think it would, would require someone who was in the affirmative okay. on the first vote to make the motion to reconsider. Okay. Then I would then, uh, based on this, at this point, I am just making a motion for reconsideration or the recall of the parking waiver that was approved at the March meeting for 385 Main Street for Redemptive Community Church uh, based on additional information. I'll second the motion. Ms. Green? Chairwoman Batman? Yes. Mr. Walford? Yes. Mr. Williford? Yes. Mr. Kish? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now, at this point, we asked staff, based on the additional information, to provide us with a staff report and a new calculation. <clears throat> and so we'd like to hear that. Then we'll ask for, speak with the applicant and then open public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman. Based on the evidence that was presented at the last meeting, staff did a recalculation uh, based on the uses that we understood were going to be done there, which would be discontinuing the apartments and using that space for office and uh, conferencing. The second floor would be a coffee shop. The basement would be a storage only at this time because there's only one entrance to that, that space. Uh, based on that, we did a calculation. <clears throat> 
And there are two uses that we had to consider. The first would be the commercial use, which was the coffee shop. Uh, and the second use would be the house of worship. The property parking would be shared, so under the code, you can reduce each of those land uses parking requirements by 20%. So under that scenario, the commercial use would require 12 parking spaces, and the house of worship would require 12 parking spaces. Uh, the applicant has provided a letter from 379 Main Street, Key West Family Dentistry, uh, that says that they can use their 20 plus spaces. However, the code requires that the property be adjacent to the house of worship. And this is removed. And if the PNC were used and they provide an agreement, then that would count as 50%. But you can't count over 50% of that shared parking. You have to provide 50%. Currently, there are six spaces on the lot. So they would have the six spaces there and then the other six spaces. But then you have the 12 spaces that would be required by the commercial use. So you would, in order to get down to the six spaces, it would require a variance or a waiver of 75% of the parking requirements. And therefore, staff is recommending that uh, when these two uses are used concurrently, that it cannot meet the parking requirement and therefore recommend denying. Any questions for staff? Madam Chair, I just have a really quick Council question. The, the six spaces um, that you mentioned obviously are in the rear. That's correct. Uh, of, of the uh, property. Um, and you mentioned that um, of the 12 and 12, I presume that would be a total of 24 spaces. That yes, would sir. Be required? Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood that clear. Thank you. Thank so, you. Do any of the... Uh, Spaces on Main Street itself count into the calculation? No, this is off street parking only. Okay. And we have the applicant here. I have uh, some questions for the applicant. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, welcome. Thank you. I, I, I'd just like to clarify the. Um, the not-for-profit for the coffee shop. It was my recollection that you said that that was something that you had seen somewhere else and you were considering, but was there any determination on that? Thank you. Um, we've met with a, doubt, a number of different business advisors and uh, thought of ways we can organize the coffee shop so that we retain one federal employee identification number and go forward as one entity with a different disregarded entity. Um, the recommendation we got was to go ahead and form two entities, two incorporations, keep the church incorporation, and start another for the coffee shop so that the need to keep it nonprofit uh, doesn't exist anymore. Um, and if I may, just to correct if the solicitor's be, comment. I was going to say, and I'll let you go right back. My vice chair reminded me. If you could please, for the record, state your name and your sure. address. Thank you. I'm Jeremy Tynstra. Um, I live at 6601 McKay Hill Drive, and uh, the church building now is 385 Main Street. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, so the solicitor's information, I think, was wrong at a couple of points. I have the application in front of me, and it doesn't indicate anywhere a use of 1,000 square feet for a coffee shop with 500 square feet in the back or a worship gathering space. And I, I wish I could scrub away that information because it's creating confusion. We do expect a coffee house to take up the entire ground level of 385 Main Street. In the seating area, we will gather on Sundays for our small group to worship. Um, th that's the only concept we have. Um, I, I don't see it anywhere. And, and similarly, uh, if we make profit, which we hope we will, um, as business owners, we'll decide where that profit goes. If we give profit freely to <coughs> Lars or Boys and Girls Club or 
um, any number of other organizations. That doesn't make us an Elia Mazentary uh, organization. That makes us a generous business owner in the community, which we hope to be. Thank you. And in the information that, that you sent to me on your on the prospectus, prospectus and things like that, where you were saying that um, you hope to attract potentially additional meetings such as AA or NA and things like that. How do you see that then impacting? Because again, I see that as something that's not quite in the calculations either. I guess I'm trying to, to reconcile whether 385 Main Street is really a church that's going to operate almost 24 hours a day in a sense of your mission that's going to have kind of a nine to five coffee shop. And is the coffee shop going to be, and I don't mean like a Starbucks, but is the coffee shop also a part of the church mission in that sense? Or is it truly a coffee shop that anyone driving up and down the street would stop at? Well, we hope everyone driving up and down Main Street will stop, yes. Um, we'd like to be a top-notch coffee shop, so go beyond what Starbucks is and maybe back to what they were. Um, that, that won't be 9 to 5. It will be more like 9 maybe to 10 at night. I think what will make us unique is that since the church owns the property and is driving the vision for the coffee shop, we might have game nights and um, movie nights where people are free to linger longer in the coffee shop premises. And... Um, Financial considerations are on our bottom line. Uh, we're concerned about how we can bless our community and serve our community with a top-notch experience on Main Street. Um, trying to think of what the rest of your question was. So you mentioned. No, I think you. Uh, yeah. The the. Uh, so again, I think for me, what I'm hearing is the the real application is for a church and a service on Main Street bringing in some of these other meetings and things like that, serving, serving. So that's what I'm trying to understand. Our role here as a commission is on the, the parking aspect of it. So if we have AA or NA meetings, that would bring cars, that would bring additional, and I don't know if those meetings are morning, afternoon, evening, if we've talked to other businesses about the business that's coming in. Because again, when it was presented, it was much more presented as the coffee shop. And without the legal review, I can tell you the way I read what I believe you wrote was that it was the coffee shop in the front and that on Sunday, the rear would be open up. So that's, I think, where we were all, our image was, it was, you know, the small part in the back was where the church was going to gather. So I think most of us had that understanding. Okay. Yeah, so when we think of um, using the space that the building holds, the counting space upstairs, of course we'd love for um, people in the community to use that space, uh, receive coffee as a gift, use our conference room as a place for meeting. Um, I, I am a little confused. We never envisioned keeping the coffee house and the church worship gathering open at the same time. So the concurrency of the two identities or entities in that space um, doesn't seem to me like that'd be much of an issue. Now, I may be in my office upstairs as the pastor of the church while the coffee shop operates downstairs, but that's not the same thing as the flow of cars for Sunday worship gatherings right. and the flow of cars for uh, commercial coffee shops. So the concurrence has me a little puzzled now. I'll <laughs> tell you where I, where I and, and either staff or legal could help me, because I too, when I first saw the concurrent and I read the application, but then again, going to the prospectus, if, if the church is trying to bring in some of these other groups, and they be afternoon, or those could run very concurrent with the coffee shop hours because you were saying the AA and the NA meetings may be up in the conference room or down in the lounge. So I don't. So I I do understand where staff is going to say potentially because those apartments are going to go away. You're looking to create, a, you know more people in there than just those that are coming in to purchase. Does that make sense? I, that's where I see the concurrent use of using your conference space and the other space there. Um, yeah, comment, Madam Chair. Those were the questions that I had. Thank you very much. As I listened last meeting, it seemed like you were trying to put 
12 pounds of substance into a six pound bag. Uh, I appreciate what you're trying to do for the disadvantaged and others who are having on hard times. Uh, but from where we, where I sit, we're talking about all of Main Street being impacted by whatever we do. Yes. And there's a procedure that says we, we don't, we don't create, the only word I can think of is a little monster. Uh, we don't create something that's, that requires all this modification. And if we do, then we've opened up all of Main Street to similar <coughs> configuration, which defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do by developing commercially on Main Street. That was where I was coming from. Can I respond? Please. Um, so currently, the building most recently has been used with three residences, one of them illegally built, um, a warehouse that pretended to be a retail shop with a dance studio in the basement. Um, we own the property and want to put a coffee house on the ground level with office space and meeting space uh, upstairs. I, I think we're simplifying the use so that it's not that kind of monster. Um, and just so you understand, um, I helped to start an uh, organization that was recognized as um, the best volunteer organization in Howard County two years ago so that homeless men could be cared for well at a facility in Jessup. And um, we don't expect that our coffee house will become a new day resource center for homeless men. Um, we might be the place that hires men, but because of my rapport and relationship uh, by working with these men for a number of years, I have no problem kicking them out, and I have no problem calling the police. Um, they respect me, and they work for me. Um, so it, it's not intended to be a... I had an informal meeting with Jack. Um, it's not intended to be a place to come and lay around and get a free cup of coffee. Um, it's intended to be a high-end coffee shop experience on Main Street with a church that gathers in the seating area on Sundays. So I, I think that simplifies the, the little monster you're concerned about in comparison with what we found at 385 when we received it. Well, it doesn't simplify for me. Um, okay. I sincerely appreciate what you're trying to do for disadvantaged people. Uh, I don't have your charisma, whatever, uh, but my hope would be that the disadvantaged people that you're now serving would be, at your expense, be integrated into the whole population. It's happening. But, but by making this, if that's happening, you're hurting your argument, but by making this significant exception to what we train, train, try to make Main Street far more commercially, uh, this legitimizes other people coming forth with the same kind of request to mix and match. That's what yeah. caused me. I mean, you can come back at me and help me if I'm unclear. The plan is to place a commercial coffee house on ground level at Main Street. Nothing about that is Ely Mazzanari over making a soup kitchen it's not even specifically targeted for the benefit of homeless people. <coughs> I, I, What's the work? What, where's the, what happens to the worship space that you talked about before? Oh, on Sunday morning, when the church uses the seating area for two hours, homeless and non-homeless, we don't know who will come and participate at that. Um, a, a few homeless who are in worship with us now, they're no longer homeless because they're working jobs and restoring relationships. If I could ask staff or or okay. or. Our, this, our city attorney, the question of uh, church space or even commercial space. So, for example, again, we would like a coffee shop on Main Street. One of my issues is when we get conference space upstairs and a lounge downstairs, are there use and occupancy permits? Is he just 24 hours a day because he's also a church that all of this can happen? Again, a, a, a commercial use property is regulated by the health department. It's you're going to have your use and occupancy. You're going to have all of those things. Whereas I believe a house of worship, for example, where I'm a member of a parish, those doors are open 24 hours a day for me to go in if I, if, you know, and things like that. So 
I'm not understanding, I guess, the use. Would the use of this property be a commercial use that is closed or opened, or are we also having a church property there? This would be two uses, so it would require the issuance of two UNOs, commercial for the coffee, uh, the assemblage for the church. Uh, the parking requirements do provide where you have two or more uses within a building. Then what you must do is count the parking for each. Yeah. You can therefore reduce the parking by 20% for the commercial and 20% for the house of worship, which brings you down to the 12 and the 12. And then if you had parking that was adjacent, you could put half of the church parking in that adjacent lot. So putting the two uses in the one building yeah. with the shared That's parking serious. is the issue because you only have six parking places. So if it were just a church? If it was just a church, that would be one. If it was just a coffee house, that would, would be one would land be one. use. But we've got two in one building. And Main Street per se precludes adjacent as far as I'm concerned. Correct. Correct. The, the, based on the current city code, he did get written approval, but that's approximately three places away or something three like that. Yeah. Okay. So it's 65 feet. Yeah, it's 65 yeah, feet. Away. And we have verbal permission from pb and and from PNC Bank, but their bank policy doesn't allow them to write uh, written permission. But the code requires an agreement. So there, too, is the issue. Another thing, Madam Chair, the uh, as far as the written permission goes, I mean, it's not adjacent, but even even uh, without that, that that is only good until that owner is there. He may move six months from now, and your written permission is no is not there anymore, and, and that next person might not be willing to grant that. So, uh, even if that was an adjacent lot, I, I can't see uh, that being useful because of that, because of the change in ownership could happen at any time. Um, another thing, I had a question for staff. Uh, maybe it was said, I just didn't hear it, but um, with, the, with the change on the land use code text amendment that the city council made the night before the last meeting, doesn't that, that whole uh, change there kind of trump the whole idea of the uh, applicant's use, I mean, it doesn't that uh, automatically prohibit this type of uh, use? Well, it prevents a iliomocenary or in philanthropic. If indeed which the coffee shop down. was iliomocenary, which is not for profit and has the IRS uh, code number, then that would not be allowed. If it's just a commercial retail coffee shop, then that would be allowed. And have we determined that yet? Yes. We've not gotten an indication either way, so because he hasn't applied for a UNO. Just so you know, um, our church family has been using five parking spots for about the last three, three, four months, and our uh, property at 385 has seven parking spots. Um, so we know that it's adequate for our current use. And the first UNO that I'll file tomorrow morning is for the congregation to gather in that space only. Um, we have an architect who's willing to draw a beautiful building for us, um, draw it all up to the code for commercial use. And um, we'll, we won't take any of those steps to build a coffee house if we can't. Um, or we'll build a coffee house and relocate our congregation to the Holiday Inn or whatever other place we can find them space. So, I mean, that, that's been our approach, is that both of these can fit in terms of how we use space right now. Um, five cars and then some walk-ups or bikes is what we've been doing, and it, it worked for us. Um, we would apply for use and occupancy tomorrow morning for just the church family to be able to worship in the building that they own. 
that, that's what we're intending to go forward with. But we know that when the coffee house is built, that'll be a, a, a different thing. I'm not sure religious land use is the same thing as healing mercenary land use. Uh, maybe the solicitor can speak to that. That religious land use is protected in a way that nonprofit or charitable uh, philanthropic land use is, is not. So uh, that's a different, I guess, question. Thank you. So the only question for us tonight then is on the city staff report, which is recommending denial of the joint use parking. This is not speaking to any use and occupancy or any of those kinds of things. Um, um, is there any other thing that you would like to add before we take a vote here? Well, I will say I'm thoroughly puzzled <laughs> <laughs> because we're putting two uses in the space that we know with some development can accommodate exactly what we hope to do there. Um, if a coffee house goes forward and agrees to rent its seating area to our church, um, we'll be thrilled that that will work. It just so happens the church owns the building that the coffee house drives in. Uh, so however we work that out in terms of identities or entities um, is, is still a question. I, we have a team of lawyers on retainer. I guess we have to bring them to get us through. Well, and, and I just, just to try, just from my perspective, again, and that I was part of the, the recall and, and the purpose was, I, to what former chairman said, what it's, it appears is that we're bringing two businesses together, both of which seem very reasonable and all into a very small space onto Main Street, which this commission spends a lot, a lot of time with. So I think, and, and again, if we take this vote, there is another step for in terms of recourse if, if it's not to your liking here. But then I think there are other options, as you say, because you do have the property now. So... Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I have a uh, just a uh, thought. Would it be beneficial to table the matter and the applicant come back with a whole new plan of use and reapply and bring it back to us at a later date under a new description of the use of the building and take it new from there and let all of this be? I, I appreciate that. Let me ask the, our fellow commissioners because there, the, there, two opportunities exist. If we table it, I think we have the property pretty much in limbo until something happens. If we take a vote here and are able, again, there are four of us, so we don't have a tiebreaker if there were to be a tie. But if we do take a vote here, he can proceed either if if we approve his going forward and if we deny it then there's recourse so i would leave it up to the other commissioners to so. make comment um because of the waiver we received already from the planning commission um, we have pressure on our closed date of the property that we're currently occupying and uh, would like to use and occupy the space beginning this sunday uh, april 19 or the worship gatherings of the church only, which for us for months have required five parking spaces and we own seven. And I will let you potentially talk to the city solicitor after this meeting. That would not be anything within our purview here. So um, I'm, I believe that we have someone here that could help speak to that. Well, we cannot issue a use and occupancy permit for a part of a building. If we issue it, it's for the entire building. Whatever you said may be. I have a question. I'm confused because there are use and occupancy permits for parts of the building already on file. There should be a rental license for the top apartments, but there should be one right. use and occupancy permit for commercial use. And when the dish was on the ground level, they only got a UNO for the ground for the, the main level. Can I ask, is, is it possible that you can meet sure. with him as soon as this, so that, because I don't want you leaving tonight without some of those answers, but again, a planning commission, we do not do anything with, with occupancy or anything like that, but I want to make sure you have all of the information that you need. So we have Mr. Welford's um, 
suggestion to possibly table. Is there a motion to um, to act on staff report or what's the pleasure of the commission? Madam Chair. We appreciate I we appreciate what you're doing, what you're trying to do. Sincerely. There's nothing about anti religion, anti helping, anti it's, it's in creating this special exception right now that generates the possibility for other entrepreneurs to try to mix and match something that suits their plan. One, I would hope for a profitable lunch place, you'd go with the aspirations of doing something big and first, first class, you would opt for a bigger place, do one or the other. But it seems like you're trying to, like I say, it's just cramming seven pounds on the three pound bag that, that creates for me a lot of discord. And that then becomes a problem for the staff, for the city, for the planning commission, for the council to give the same consideration to others who want to do that. So it's not against you per se. It's, I'm trying to look at a, what we've come to face over the years. When you make an exception here, you gotta make an exception there and there and there. And that defeats the whole purpose of what we were trying to do on Main Street from my perspective. Before I call for a motion or before we close this, um, I did not officially open the public hearing. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this issue? Okay. Thank you. Can, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, Oops. So at 358, there's another uh, internet cafe prepared to open soon um, in a spot that is 800 square feet with um, so far as I can tell, no parking lot. Um, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around how that business will fit in there. Isn't 358 in another county? No, 358 is um, two and a half blocks down. No. Where are you? Where are you? You're not in Laurel. Or in the other place, are you? 358, there's a, another coffee house that's opening there. It's that's just a coffee house. For the, uh, but they're 800 square feet. Our, our, Coffee house should take 1,500 square feet. So we think that we actually have a, a nice large place to put a coffee house. Okay. We have not had that property before us. No, that is my understanding. That is the former health food store that's been out of business maybe eight, ten months. And there is parking behind that building. That building was divided. I think it initially it was an entire building for a uh, beauty parlor and then it was divided in half and the health food store went in and, and they went out of business and then uh, we've got an application for a, a coffee shop and an internet use but that has not come before the no. planning commission no, okay it hasn't. I do not have any information on that okay do I have a motion or do we Madam Chairman, I'm going to make a motion. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that the Planning Commission, uh, after uh, submitting this technical staff technical staff report, uh, deny the parking modification application for three. What is the address? Three eighty five Main Street. Be consistent. I'll second the motion and be second the motion. Ms. Green. Mr. Kish. Yes. Mr. Williford. You said yes. What are you saying? To the motion. Okay, yes. Mr. Walford. Yes. Chairwoman Batman. Yes. Motion carries. So, the we have the, city, the attorney, if you would like to speak to him to help you with neck or understand next steps and things like that. Um, we appreciate your time and you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, Mr. Kish, could I clarify, please, uh, your motion? 
was that to include action on resolution number 15-16-PC. Yes, it was, Madam Chair. Same here. Thank you. Ms. Green, is that okay to include that the motion included action on resolution? Yeah, I'll okay. make a uh, note in the minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to our final agenda item, text amendment number 238, ordinance number 1844, and ordinance to amend chapter 20, land development and sub subdivision, article one zoning, division one in general section 20-1.7. Definitions to amend and add definitions, Division 5 Zoning District, Section 20-6-13, Table of Residential Zone Uses, Table of Commercial Zone Uses, um, and we are being asked to provide an effective date for a recommendation to the Mayor and City Council, and we did receive this text amendment. Staff report? Yes, Madam Chairman, the text amendment is in three parts. The first is definitions of the zoning regulations. This is clarification of two definitions and adding an, an additional definition for lodging house where currently there is none in the zoning ordinance. The second part is amending the residential zones to add lodging houses to the current rooming house regulations uh, and further clarification automobile laundry is actually auto wash manufacturing of leather goods and changing uh, permitted uses of house of worship in two of the three uses oh excuse me in uh, five of the commercial zones from permitted to special exception and, and uh, located on an acre or greater would remain to be permitted. An office building to be amended to add antennas to communication towers in order to allow antennas on the top of buildings, not only communication towers. And finally is an update of the parking regulations uh, this was something that Mr. Manzi and Mr. Rinder worked on. Uh, we're bringing this forward to update them and bring them concurrent. Uh, bring them up to uh, update with our contiguous property uh, local governments so that they will have the same, essentially the same parking requirements. Questions for staff? Uh, I was struck by the Division 6 parking and loading facilities, and maybe I'm just not understanding that the minimum number of required off-street parking spaces for each type of use shall be listed in the following schedule. On a one-family dwelling, we're going from two to three spaces, townhouses two to three. I mean, I, I that's a huge, to me, increase in terms of off-street parking. If we're talking about in, in the city limits, I very few of our current homes have that many off-street parking. So are we just... I had no issues with any of the other parts. I appreciate the clarifications on boarding and lodging, but uh, can you help me understand the off-street parking is? I'm just thinking that, but in terms of new construction, so for example, would this then apply to 
um, the property that we're looking at over off of uh, Van Dusen and Conti, the, the, the Conterra area and things like that, the Laurel Park. Um, I don't know, did anybody else see that as, as, as just yeah. a, a high increase? I'm just thinking that anybody that wouldn't be able to meet that then would be coming to us for a modification. For modification. Do we have any kind of analysis as to current property? How much would even, I know this isn't retroactive, but within the city limits, most of our driveways that you build, the property's not large enough to have more than, you know, one car, one car in addition. So yeah. again, that to me just struck me. I wasn't sure. And I understand where you're going about someone that wants to use their garages filling it up, but I just didn't know whether we wanted to blanket the whole city with something. And are there, is, does council have well, any? Well, let me, let me just, just add my perspective on this. <clears throat> I mean, I think it's, it, it's pretty clear to most of us that nowadays uh, the formula that I think that's been used in the past to um, uh, calculate the number of parking spaces uh, for dwelling units because there are more cars and, and families than there have been. Uh, I mean, that's just from a practical uh, point of view. Uh, and also, I, I think because this um, text amendment would affect new dwellings, uh, new projects versus existing, that it's not going to impact at all uh, our existing uh, stock, but for new development uh, with this requirement, it, what, what we experience right now in many of our, 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 our communities, and anyone up there on staff, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we see that most households have more vehicles uh, than the parking that's been allowed for that project uh, will accommodate. And so I think in part this is the effort to for new development to kind of abate that a little bit uh, as, as much as we can. So again, if I'm off base with that, please. No, sir, you're absolutely correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Are there any? John? No. Okay. Um, this is a text amendment. I don't have anyone signed up to speak. Is there anyone that wishes to speak. Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'll move to approve text amendment number 238, ordinance number 1844 for recommendation to the mayor and city council. I second that. Ms. Green, if you'll call the roll, please. Mr. Walford? Yes. Mr. Kish? Yes. Mr. Williford? Yes. Chairwoman Bettman? Yes. Motion carries. No further business. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.